Now, once you finish laying out your grid line and your level, uh, you might want to start doing other building elements. Now, let's take a look at uh, maybe we need to, for example, do a floor slab on the second floor. We won't need to do that on the first floor because we already have the building pads in the site plan. So if we're going to create the same floor uh, profile on level two, we should do it in the level two floor plan. So if we go to level two, we cannot see the edge of that uh, uh, building pad on the site level. So one way we can do that is to use reference plane to identify where that location is for the building pad. So when we create the floor slab on the second level or third level, we can match it up with the ground level uh, building pad. So what we can do is go to go back to level one plan, and then we're going to uh, trace the building plan for this profile only, so we can see this profile on the level two and three. And we really don't need to do this on these other edges where it's going to be uh, identified, uh, can be identified with the grid line. So we're going to go to architectural tab and then select reference plane. And I'm just going to pick this corner, snap to the corner. You can see snap to the end point and just draw the reference plane down. And just follow that, snap to the corner and do this. Now, usually I like to extend the reference plane before beyond the edges. So I'm going to put my mouse over the edge of these uh, building pad and use tab key. You can see that now I'm selecting the, if I click now, I'll be selecting the reference plane. So I'm going to click, you see the grip, I can just drag the grip out. So that if I need to select the reference plane, I can pick this point and don't have to use the tab key again. Same thing here, I'm just going to use the tab key. And what I can do is just highlight the pad and then just temporarily high isolate the pad, uh, hide the element. Oh, now I need to see, I didn't create a reference plane here. So I'm going to go back and create a reference plane, select this, drag a little bit beyond the intersection point, do the same thing over here. Oops. Control C to try it again because it's not horizontal. And I'm going to pick on this reference plane. Just drag a little bit further out. Now, before I finish this uh, part of the exercise, I don't want my reference plane to be accidentally moved. So I'm just going to click on one of the reference plane and right mouse, uh, create, uh, select all instance visible. It won't let me. So I'm just going to use my mouse click, click on this and use the control key and keep clicking on all these reference plane. And I'm going to pin it down. Okay, now if I go to level two, I'll be able to see the edge of this reference plane. And I can create a floor slab based on this uh, information. So if I go to level three, I can see the same thing. If I go to the roof plan, I'll be able to see the edge of these uh, profile of the uh, building pad on the ground level. Now, another useful application of reference plane is to define the corridor boundary in a multi-level building. Sometimes you want the corridor to all line up on all different level. Uh, rather than using a grid line, you can use reference plane. Now we're going to go to the architectural tab and select reference plane. And then in the level one plan, we're going to draw some reference plane and we want to set the offset to be 2400. Uh, that will be our corridor width. So we're going to pick on this point at the end of the grid line and drag it across. You can see the reference plane is being created at the bottom uh, of the line that I'm creating. So I'm going to hit space bar so that it will flip to the top. I'm just going to drag it a little bit beyond that edge. And then I'm going to pick another point from the inside of these uh, corner here and you pick and then drag it down. You can see that reference plane is being created on the right side of the line I'm defining. So I'm going to pick this to here and I'm going to pick another point again from, from this point and drag it across. You can see that another reference plane is being created 
below the line that I'm, I'm creating. So afterward, I can go back and drag on the reference plane and edit the grip and just drag it out over here and then pick this one and then drag this, drag the grip and bring it over here so they intersect and do the same thing on this side. Now, if we go to level two plan, You're going to be able to see the other reference plane that I, the same reference plane that I draw in level one. So they all matches up. And same for level three and the roof plan. So this is a really a good tool for lining up elements in different, uh, from a different viewpoint. Now, in the more recent version of uh, Rabbit, uh, there's a new feature added to reference plane. We can create a subcategory of reference plane and assign a color to each subcategory so we can identify the different subcategory of reference plane. For example, I can have one color to identify the slab edge and another color for this reference plane that define the boundary of the corridor. So let's take a look how that is done. So I'm going to go to the Manage tab, select Manage tab, and then from the object style, um, command, click on object style, and then the object style uh, menu will show up. I'm going to select the annotation object tab. Now I'm going to scroll down to reference plane to look for reference plane starting with R. I'm going to highlight reference plane and I'm going to select add or modify subcategory. So we're going to click on a new, so we're going to add a new subcategory. And I'm going to call this slab edge. I'm going to select OK. Now a new subcategory is created. So I'm going to change the color to be a blue, this blue. I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to change the line type, line pattern to hidden or dash. Actually, let's try dash. And I'm going to make this line weight to be a little bit heavy so I can see easily. So I'm going to change it to number eight. I'm going to select apply. Select OK. Now I'm going to click on these reference plane, which I previously uh, created to define the, the slab edge. So click on this, 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 and this one, and also this one. And then from the property uh, palette, on the subcategory in here, I'm going to click on a drop down. I'm going to select slab edge. You can see that these lines turn into a uh, bright uh, blue. And if I go to different level, level two, you see the same thing. Level one, you see the same thing. Now I'm going to create a new category for corridor boundary for these reference planes. So I'm going to select object style again under annotation object tab scroll down to reference plane, expand it and highlight it. And I'm going to select new down here to create a new subcategory. I'm going to call this uh, corridor boundary. And select OK. I'm going to change this to a red color. Select OK. And I want this to be a center line uh, pattern. I'm going to change this to also to a line weight of eight so I can see easily. Let's like apply. Let's select OK. I'm going to click on this reference plane and then hold down control. Click on this reference plane. And then from down here, click on this reference plane while I'm holding down my control key. And then go to the property tab and change the subcategory of these reference planes to corridor boundary. And you may want to click on this reference plane and just drag it up. And if you go to a different level view, and then you can see they're all lined up all the same in the same location.
So this is a very useful way of using reference plane to line up your geometry in your model.